Verse 8, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Who on earth is Amalek? Well, back to Genesis chapter 36. These are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. And the Bible says he, he ruled the territory from Shur all the way over to Havilah. They're an interesting bunch of folks. They were over here when the children of Israel came across the Red Sea. They were waiting to attack them. And later we'll see where they attacked them from the backside, sneaky, kept picking off the ones that were weak or lagging behind, or the ones that couldn't keep up with the group as they're marching. Now, Abram also had a nephew named Lot. Lot had two sons by his own daughters. His daughters got him drunk and got pregnant by their own dad. They are the Moabites and the Ammonites. Big old family feud, okay? Wow. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. It's interesting. The Amalekites didn't attack until the Jews, or the children of Israel, got water. Water in a desert is worth more than gold. He's not spanking them. <laughs> and the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book. God said, Moses, write this down. And rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. God said, I'm going to wipe out the whole bunch. These descendants of Esau, the brother of Jacob, I'm going to wipe out the whole tribe. God is telling this. Moses, write this down. I'm going to wipe them out. Men, women, children, going to wipe them out. God's You're done conquering the land. Come back here and kill them all. Hmm. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, God tells King Saul, or tells Samuel to tell Saul, the king, Samuel said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Pay attention, king. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel. This is 400 years later. How he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now, now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not. But slay both man and woman, infant, suckling, and suckling ox and sheep, camel and ass. Now the skeptics love to pick on this verse and say how cruel God is. He's going to kill the babies and the cows. What did they do wrong? Well, you need to understand who these Amalekites were. God had given them hundreds of years to repent. They were involved in child sacrifice. They had the god Baal, which was an altar with the arms out like that, where they'd build a fire under it. And lay, if they didn't want their baby, they got too many kids in the family, they would lay the baby on these brass arms and burn it to death, screaming and kicking. America's worse. We kill them before they're even born. Yeah. Over a million a year. Yeah, abortion is murder, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. Absolute murder. And any doctor who performs it ought to be executed for doing it. If I'm president, we're going to change that law for sure. Okay. Anyway, that's why I'm probably never going to be president. Uh, but Malachites were involved in some unbelievable sins. They were having sex with animals. Oh my God. So not only were they full of diseases, their animals were full of diseases. God said, kill all the animals too. This is for the good of society. Yes. Doesn't the doctor say if you have some, some, some kind of problem, take this antibiotic for seven days? Why seven days? After two days, you feel good. You've killed off most of them. Yeah, but there's still some little baby bacteria that need to be killed. The little baby ones that didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, kill them too. They grow up and get big. They're going to grow up and get big. Yeah. And the Amalekites, if you don't kill them all, they're, they're at, something is in their attitude that's just genetic, apparently. You can't get it out of there. Right. Like maybe pit bulls are bred that way to be vicious. Rottweiler, stuff like that. Suppose when they first discovered, let's take a disease like AIDS. When they first discovered AIDS, suppose 50 people had AIDS. And so somebody said, kill them all. <gasps> How many people have died from AIDS because they didn't kill them all when there was only 50? Millions. Millions? Yeah. Yes, it would have been merciful to humanity to wipe them out when you could have wiped them out. God said, Samuel, 
Tell Saul, go kill all the Amalekites, everything. Wipe them out. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou come to Shur. Same all the way across the Saudi Arabian Peninsula. That is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. Oh, he saved one of them, the king. Now you read the story how Agag came delicately to King Saul. Oh, he's probably homosexual, you know. He took Agag and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. And Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and the oxen and the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refuse, that they utterly destroyed. Saul did not fully obey God. God made it clear what he wanted. Saul didn't do it. Now, because of this, Saul lost his job. And David became the next king. You can read that story in 1 Samuel. Okay, But <clears throat> it's interesting. Moses fought with the Amalekites in 1440 B.C., before Christ. 400 years later, Saul was told to wipe him out. Didn't quite do it. Left one alive. Almost 600 years after that, there's a lady in the Bible named Esther. How many have ever heard of the book of Esther in the Bible? Fascinating story. Esther was taken captive with her family from Israel and made to work under the Persian Empire. And she was, because of a beauty contest, she reluctantly entered. They made all the beautiful girls get in whether they wanted or not. She won, if that's a prize. And she had to marry the king. Esther is one of his wives. She has a job to do, and you'll see why. She goes in. He holds out the golden scepter. He said, what would you like, honey? She said, I need some help. Here's what happened. Esther chapter 3. After these things did the king Ahasuerus, her, her husband, promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, a descendant of Agag. Who did Saul spare 600 years earlier? Agag. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. Don't allow these people to live. Guess who he's talking about? The Jews. Now, why would Haman harbor a grudge against all the Jews in the world? He, he, somebody told him the story about what happened to his great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandparents, and he wants to kill every Jew. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. Let's kill all the Jews. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. Hey, king, I'll pay to have this done. Wipe out all the Jews. I'll give you 10,000 talents of silver, whatever that is, a couple million dollars. King said, okay, go ahead. And you can read the whole book of Esther, how it was a miracle the way God worked here. And then at the end of the story, Haman ends up getting hanged on his own gallows. Amen. Right? Read the book of Esther. It's a great story. And the ten sons of Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews, they, they killed them too, his ten sons. But on the spoil laid they not their hand. So the Jews killed Haman's sons, who was going to kill them. On that day, the number of those that were slain in Shushan the palace was brought before the king. And the king said to Esther the queen, the Jews have slain and destroyed 500 men in Shushan the palace and the ten sons of Haman. What have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now, what is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. Or what is thy request further? And it shall be done. And then said Esther, If it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews which are in Shushan to do tomorrow also according to the, today's decree. We need one more day to finish killing off these Agagites. And let Haman's ten sons be hanged upon the gallows. See, Haman had built a gallows 75 feet tall to hang Mordecai on because he wouldn't bow. Esther's stepdad, foster dad. Well, because of this amazing feat that happened when the, when the sons of Haman were hanged on the gallows and the, finally the Amalekites are wiped out a thousand years after they should have been, the Jews today still celebrate this every year. It's called the Feast of Purim. They make cookies and pass them around. The cookies are triangular shaped to represent Haman's son's ears or Haman's ears. Wow. Good. Google it. Wow. The Feast of Purim. Okay. 
And during World War II, that kept the Jews alive. They realized, boy, God protected, God protected our people in the reign of Haman. He'll protect us through all this with Hitler. And the Jews keep this stuff alive in their feasts, the Feast of Purim, something they do every year to celebrate God giving them the victory. They teach their kids this, this story from the time they're itty-bitty. They act out plays and all this kind of stuff. Wow. Hanging the sons on the gallows and the whole thing. Now, well, some people like the Agagites should have been wiped out a long time earlier. Because Saul didn't quite finish the job, or didn't finish it in time, one slipped through. This bad gene was perpetuated. Are you, are you listening to me, that, are you that are listening to me, are, am I, are any of us, are we tolerating just a little bit of sin in our life that's going to come back and haunt us five generations from now? How many people have a habit? Drugs, alcohol, whatever. It's going to come back and haunt you. Maybe with your kids, maybe with your grandkids, maybe with your great-grandkids. You better check and get the dust out of the closet and say, Okay, Lord, is there anything in my life that doesn't please you? Help me to clean it up, Lord. Help me. They should have looked around and found every single Amalekite. Didn't quite, didn't quite do it. I think it's a lesson for all of us to really search our heart and say, God, is there anything that's not pleasing to you in my life? Help me to get it out. Amen. Lord, help me. It took them a thousand years. How many people were hurt or injured or died because they didn't quite finished the job a thousand years earlier. God told Joshua to go into the land and kill all those different tribes. Didn't, didn't get them all. They're still today having trouble in Israel mm -hmm. over some of the ones that should have been wiped out long time ago. Mm -hmm. Right across the border from Israel is a country called Jordan. Ammon, Jordan. Ammon, Ammon, Ammonites. Lot's illegitimate child with his daughter. Yeah. I don't think you're going to understand the history, the, the, how to fix the problem in the Middle East until you see how they got into this problem to begin with. I just want each of you to think about it for a minute. Is there something in your life that you ought to learn this lesson from 3,500 years ago? Say, God, you told me to get that sin out of my life. I didn't quite get it out, did I, Lord? No. And they only possess one-tenth of the land God gave them. They, the Nile to the Euphrates. They get Nile to you. They're not way less than one tenth. Israel's a little sliver of what they're going to get someday and what God told them to get. And so, so many Christians only get a small piece of what God wants them to have. And we shut off the blessings ourselves by the stupid, stupid decisions we make. Exodus 18. Tomorrow night. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for these lessons. Father, help us to learn things that will change us into what you want us to be. Guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh,